Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Support. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Williams, supported by Ms. Roscoe, for approval of block party event for Saturday, August the 24th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to midnight in the closing of the California Avenue at Oak Brook Street and Branch Street with SS Granite for emergency vehicles for this stated event. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Through the chair? Thank you. Yes, uh, Ms. Talley. Ms. Brandy, can we come? Are Absolutely. we invited? I would love to have all of you there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Great. Thank you, City Council. Number four is the chairperson's report. Thank you, Dep Deputy Clerk. Uh, first of all, we had a 6.30 meeting tonight, study session, uh, to discuss the uh, 2024 infrastructure update from uh, Roberta Scapp, TGR, great uh, DPW guy, does a great job for us. Uh, at this time, I'd like to recognize, the chair going to recognize uh, Councilwoman Abdo. Thank you, sir. I'd like to ask Council for a resolution commending a 1987 graduate of Romulus High School, General Fred Hockett, who has been promoted to Brigadier General of the U.S. Army. Support. I, I heard about seven supports. I heard all, that's a great, I heard all those supports. Who did, it, uh, who did it first? I was in the Army. Okay. <laughs> All right. I give you props. Mr. Wadsworth. It's been motioned by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Wadsworth for resolution. Uh, discussion, Mayor. I've seen your hand. Uh, just a quick comment. I was honored to be invited to the pinning ceremony they had at our VFW. And uh, um, Fred Hockett went through ROTC the same time I came through ROTC in high school. So it was neat to see some of the people who came back who were old Eagles that went through the ROTC program yes. and continued their career and, uh, and uh, public service service to the country. So it's very, very special moment. And to achieve that rank of Brigadier General mm -hmm. is a very, very important milestone. Nice. Um, and he's already talking about working a way to bring a ROTC program back to our schools. So we're going to make sure we're, they're talking to the right people. But uh, what a great event yeah. and uh, proud to be an Eagle moment for everybody yeah. in the city around us for sure. Great. Any Thank other, you. Any other discussion? OK. No other discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Chair votes yes, that motion is approved. The chair now going to recognize Councilwoman Talley. Thank you, to, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to make a resolution recognizing David S. Jones as the great Romulus, Greater Romulus Chamber of Commerce, 37th person of the year. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Talley, supported by Ms. Williams, to recognize David Jones for Person of the Year. Any discussion? If no discussion, roll call vote. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the spring fever, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> Winter one day and spring me. the next day. <laughs> Ms. Abdo, I'm sorry. Yes. Chair votes yes, motion approved. Uh, next, uh, Chair is going to recognize two outstanding people from Wayne County, uh, Ms. Dur Duran Riley, the CEO of Just Air and Ms. Christy Allen, the project lead from Wayne County, to discuss some air quality c concerns. Uh, well, thank you all so much uh, for inviting us, and it was a pleasure to sit next to you during the Wayne County address. Uh, we're just here to give an uh, update and spread awareness about our organization called Just Air, um, and also give some highlights on uh, what's going on with the Wayne County Air Quality Management Project um, that we are partnering with Wayne County on. Uh, so just a quick high level. Well, first of all, I'm Jared Riley, CEO of Just Air Founder. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Allen, I'm project manager on the Just Air team. Awesome. So, um, so Just Air is really an um, air quality platform 
uh, to create neighborhood level air quality networks so we have more granularity in understanding the air that we're breathing, right? Um, so the problem that we're solving is that when you walk out your door, having a, close, a monitor closer to you gives you a better uh, chance that that is a relevant, relevant uh, air that you're breathing, right? And we're talking about outdoor air quality. So we're uh, getting real-time samples to present to you on the app or the dashboard um, that will allow you to assess that information and make decisions uh, to better improve your health and mitigate risk, right? Um, so our whole uh, opportunity that uh, Christy will dive into is that we have a three-year partnership with 100 monitors with Wayne County. Um, it's kind of really a monumental opportunity to give the access in the hands of residents. So we're working with uh, cities and uh, townships throughout Wayne County and three communities to make sure the asset is made available. Um, so Chris will share more uh, about the project. Yeah, thanks Aaron. So just to provide a little more detail, the project started in August of last year. Um, since last August we've been working with the Wayne County Air Quality Task Force and um, a group of health research partners to start identifying good locations for all 100 fixed air quality monitors across the county. Um, it's been a collaboration of health research data, um, asthma rates, uh, hospitalization rates as it relates to asthma, um, existing data on PM 2.5 and ozone um, data, so a variety of kind of location selection criteria, um, and we've started installing some of these monitors across the county in the last uh, three weeks or so, and we'll continue installing the monitors through the end of April. Um, all of the data that's collected by these monitors is available to the public. Um, so if you or any of your constituents are curious about what's going on in the air near them, um, you'll be able to log on to justair.app and uh, see the network of 100 air quality monitors across Wayne County to see what the air quality near you looks like. Um, and then as we continue to run this project with the county, we'll be working with uh, community associations, nonprofits, um, leaders in the community at large to start to understand what to do with some of this historic data. So um, right now there isn't a ton of data to dive into, um, so there will be data that we'll start working with um, in the next uh, couple of years. So the project runs through 2026 and we'll start running community workshops. We're always able to show up to events like this or go to neighborhood block club meetings even um, to kind of share more about who we are and what we do in the coming months and years. So thanks for taking a few minutes to listen to us. And, um, happy to answer any questions. If yes, uh, Ms. Williams, go ahead. So can you tell us how many of those uh, systems that you have in our city? Yes, so right now the plan is to install two monitors in Romulus. One is slotted to be installed outside of Romulus High School, and one will be at the intersection of North Line Road, and I believe it's West Huron Drive. Do those intersect? North Line. It's like right yeah. under 94. So none will be installed around the airport, or you just haven't got to that point? The radius that the monitors cover are between one to three miles. So I believe that both of those monitors are within one to three miles of the airport. Correct me if I'm wrong though. So, and we'll have uh, mo other monitors at what are other uh, townships and cities around the airport. Airport is definitely a place of focus. Well, and, and my concern was because of the airplanes dropping, you know, all Absolutely. The, the, the different toxins that they drop in the air as they go past, you know, my concern was, and because there's so many homes, within a certain amount, amount of uh, radius of, of, of the airport, it should really be, that should be a main concern too, versus uh, the areas that you said, which is outside of the airport, it should be closer so we can keep track on what type of air quality that is. That's, that's very important, because sometimes you can come out and you can smell a certain thing if once the airplane uh, go by, so uh, please look into that. I, I pull your website up, it just looked like all the air was good, and so maybe because you haven't got started, because we know all the air is not good. So um, I'll definitely uh, keep my eyes on it, but uh, definitely consider or put one closer to the airport versus neighborhood, because that's that's really important. Yeah, Thank no, you. I, um, I appreciate uh, your concerns and, and definitely that feedback. And one other thing that we're looking at as well. 
Um, we have 100 monitors. I guess the best way to think about it is like cell towers, right? We have cell phones. Um, so like when there's a plume of uh, maybe the forest fires that come down from Canada or a local event like a truck derailing or something exploding, right? We're able to track that plume over time with wind direction throughout the monitors, right? So if you have the airport, we're able to see the patterns of pollution in real time to be able to look at, you know, after the fact, you might not catch it real time all the time, but after the fact, we definitely do that deep down analysis of looking, analysis looking at what disparities do we have in our community. But um, absolutely, the prime, some of the prime pollutant sources, we definitely keep track of it. Yeah, because so around the airport, you have a lot of industrial uh, companies and they're doing, you know, shooting up a lot of stuff in the air. And yeah. so, you know, my concern being a resident of Ramos, I would definitely want that air to be tracked to make sure that nothing is coming or poisoning the, the folks that live in Ramos. So that, that, that's one of my main concerns. So if you guys can take it back to whoever is over you guys, uh, the airport really needs one. Thank you. Is there any other comments? Uh, Mr. Washburn. What's the, uh, what's the total number of these miners? I didn't quite catch what you said. Across the county, it's a total of 100. In our city here? In, in our city. the city of Romulus, it's two. Two. And then there are three just on like borders with Taylor and New Boston. Okay, fine. Thank you. Any other comments from morning? To the chair, please. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Uh, quickly here. What constituted these uh, air quality monitors? I mean, what prompted you to, to come to Romulus? I mean, I know you said you had 100 of them and uh, across the, the county, right? Yeah. And uh, I mean, the airport's been here forever. So uh, what, 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 what did you have to initiate uh, those monitors being placed in, in the areas around uh, the locations that you just addressed? Totally. So um, is this like an experiment or something, or is this? Uh, yeah, I think, so, no, yeah, I'll, I'll let me ask you a question. I think, yeah, so even starting the company as a founder, I live in Southwest Detroit, uh, developed the asthma over time, mm -hmm. so, okay. high so that's, you know, really what I understood in my technical experience is how we actually use data in the context of our health to actually make decisions, mm -hmm. not just behavioral, but environmental and policy, right? Mm -hmm. That's the spark of the company. Now, in terms of partnership with Wayne County, it's really all around Wayne County has the highest rates of asthma okay. uh, hospitalization in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, and those uh, health disparities are something to pay attention to because all of this from pulmonary. That's what sparks it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this whole three-year study is to really investigate what's really going on and the more data we have, the better control and understanding we have around that. It also, uh, like the pollutant sources are not necessarily always just the major source of the airport, but also just be idling outside of a school, as simple as that, like you know, just having your car running and a lot of fumes going in there. So, being very thoughtful about what we can do, you know, what we can do as citizens, it sucks because it's happening to us. We have to do something about it. But long term, what environmental things can we do to make sure we mitigate risk in the future? Right? Okay, so, thank you for that. And just a quick follow up who's funding uh, this uh, project? Yeah, uh, so uh, through Wayne County, um, a lot of it's from the uh, ARPA funds. From, uh, the, excuse me? Sorry, it's, uh, so it's from the health department at Wayne County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? I mean, from the council. I'd like to say, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, I met uh, Mr. Riley and Mr. Allen at the state of the county uh, address, and I had some some residents, especially Mr. Miller. He was concerned about air quality in Romulus, so I I invited you guys to come out, and I really appreciate it to give uh, information to the. To our residents. So I really appreciate it and thank you a lot for joining. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. And I would just like to say, as the Bible says, the young shall lead, thank you for being so concerned and being proactive about actually trying to figure out because Southwest Detroit down in there, that air quality is, is terrible. So if someone don't do anything about it as time go on, you have a lot of illnesses. So thank you for your hard work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Pardon. I have a uh, thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm on the website, and I can see where you can sign up for an alert. So is this, what triggers the monitor, or is it something that's constantly, or how often does it test the quality? Um, so yeah, so uh, the monitors sample uh, sample every um, five minutes. It won't get triggered every five minutes. 
Uh, it's similar to five minutes, but it's all rolling into what's called the air quality index, which is what the EPA says is the standard. So it's a rolling average. Um, so every hour we check to see if a monitor by you is unhealthy. If there a monitor, a monitor that you're subscribed to is unhealthy, you'll then get an alert. Um, and then we also re-alert you when that's back to good. Um, and we give instructions based on the pollutants on what you can do to mitigate your mitigate risk, right? So if it's the forest fires, for example, everything is red, right? Um, what things you can do, wear an N95 mask to help protect yourself. If it's ozone, um, it, maybe it's time to carpool, and maybe think twice about pumping your gas that day. The acid VOCs that can harm your pulmonary and your beer if you're breathing. So uh, to answer your question, uh, every hour we're checking. As long as it's good, you won't hear anything. If it's bad, we'll let you know. And you can also, we're getting to the point where you can actually uh, click those settings up and down if you, how many alerts you want, when you want them. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, that concludes the chairperson's report. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to accept your report. I second that motion. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Talley, for approval of the chairperson's report. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Number five is the mayor's report. Thank you. Good evening, City Council, Madam Treasurer, Deputy Clerk. Um, before I get into my report today, I'd like to draw your attention to the monitor for Vanessa Tolliver from the mayor's office for a few announcements. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, great information as always. I'd also like to thank our Recreation uh, Commission and uh, you know Michael Skaskin, his team, and Colleen uh, McKay Dumas uh, for the great job they did at Easter Egg Hunt. I heard a lot of people call and said what a great time they had. Um, I was at the pinning ceremony for Brigadier General Hackett, so I wasn't able to attend. Um, but Historical Society came out. Um, Recreation Commission was there. Like I said, Colleen and Mike and the whole Recreation team did a great job in this event. And I saw some great pictures. So. Um, another good good event, uh, change the venue a little bit because we had some situations with some trees over at the old place where it might not have been safe to have the kids over there, so we want to get those addressed. And we moved it and it was uh, um, a big hit over the historical uh, park. So thank you to everybody that made that a success again. Uh, first action that I have tonight is a disposal for obsolete and worn uh, city property. I concur, concur with the recommendation of Roberto Scappatici, DPW Director, and respectfully request City Council authorize the DPW to dispose of the listed vehicles, <coughs> see table below, through Martin Towing with a disposal fee 
of $50 per vehicle with all of the proceeds deposited in the appropriate city fund. And just to remind people too, we used to have the city auctions when we had uh, some vehicles that were of value. By the time these vehicles are going off to auction anymore, they are used up and passed through all departments. So um, not a lot of value there, but this is the best way, most effective way to, to dispose of these old vehicles. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we approve them, that we approve the disposal of the obsolete warrant and surplus property. I'll second that motion. It's been motioned by Mr. Washworth, supported by Ms. Talley, for disposal of obsolete warrant or surplus, surplus properties. Any discussion? Yes. So are they just disposing these uh, vehicles or... Are they selling them? Is this yeah. company purchasing them? They, they auction them off. With all funds go back to the city, it goes to the appropriate fund, motor vehicle fund, I believe. So how would we know what, will we get a um, feedback on how much they sold for each vehicle? Absolutely. Gonna, okay, thank you. In motion by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Talley. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Chair votes yes. <coughs> Motion approved. Thank you. The next item I have for action is Municipal Library Board reappointment. I'm hereby requesting approval to reappoint Jennifer Johnson to the Municipal Library Board as a Huron Township representative with a term to expire April 11, 2026. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion to concur with the administration and approve the reappointment of Jennifer Johnson to the Municipal Library Board as a Huron Township representative with a term to expire on April 11, 2026. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Roscoe for Municipal mm -hmm. Library Board reappointment. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. And I'd also like to thank Jennifer <coughs> Johnston for her service to our community as well. She does a great job over there. Um, the next item I have is Michigan Department of Agricultural and Rural Development uh, for Animal Welfare. I concur with the recommendation of Roger Salwa, Police Captain, <coughs> City Attorney Stephen Hitchcock, and respectfully request City Council adopt a resolution authorizing the Mayor and Clerk to enter into the attached intergovernmental agreement with the Michigan Department of Agricultural and Rural Development for the spaying and neutering grant awarded to the City of Romulus Animal Shelter. We have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we approve the Michigan Department of Agriculture and the um, and the rural development of the 2024 um, Animal Welfare Fund in the amount of $4,000. Support. Been motioned by Mr. Walker, <coughs> supported by Ms. Williams for the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development 2024 Animal Welfare Grant Award. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes. Ms. Talley. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. The next item I have up is a no-fee permit request for John Elmer Johnson's Park in Romulus Middle School. I concur with the request of Colleen Dumas, Recreation Director, and respectfully request Council authorize a no-fee permit for the Romulus Middle School for the use of Elmer Johnson's Park Pavilion on June 7, 2024 for the end of the year 8th grade picnic. John, I make that motion. Motion by Ms. Williams. Support. Supported by Ms. Abdo for no fee permit for Elmer Johnson Park Romans Middle School 8th grade picnic. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion approved. Thank you. The last action I might have tonight for council is the amended uh, employee policies number 17 and number 18. I believe you've all re uh, received uh, revision from chief of staff prior to the meeting. And I also have attorney Stephen Hitchcock here to uh, answer any questions you have. 
Um, right now, I concur with the recommendation of Kevin Lowson, Human Resources Director, and Stephen Hitchcock, Legal Counsel, and request count City Council adopt <laughs> the amendments to the Employee Policy and Procedure Manuals, Policies Number 17 and Number 18. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Roscoe. I'll make that motion to accept the amended Employee Policies Number 17 and Number 18. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Abdo for amended employee policy number 17 and number 18 in discussion. Yes. Ms. Williams. Yes, I wasn't here when this was discussed, and I just have a question. Up under the uh, following additional modifications that were made on policy 17, it said added language that, uh, that non-exempt employees shall be paid at the overtime rate. So what non-exempt employees are we speaking of? I'm not sure of the names of the people. They're not very. No, no, no. I'm not asking for names. Oh, no, I'm not employees. asking for names. Yeah, they're non-union employees that are uh, not supervising other employees. That's what I should sorry to say. So they're not. You'd be exempt if you supervise your capacity. You're an exempt employee. So there are a few. So employees. like directors. I mean, that's what. The directors would be exempt employees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Any other discussion? Yes. Yeah, just quick. Mr. Uh, Wilson. Chair, please. Yes. Directors and uh, there, are there any additional employees, uh, clerical or that fit this category? Yeah, there are a few, few employees that fit the category of being non-exempt, mm -hmm. but yet don't supervise other employees. Of, of course, yes. Yeah, against the law of your supervisor and your unionized I guess but uh, do we know how many people we're talking about in total do you have an idea of what the breadth of the population is in this category Maybe half a dozen. Yeah. I think not more than a half a dozen probably six people yeah the rest of them as you indicated would be union employees okay thank you thank you, thank you. Any other discussion? No other discussion, roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Uh, yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Chair votes yes, the motion is approved. Thank you, just one last update too I have for um, we had an unfortunate incident uh, last week at a, at a nightclub that was operating in the city of Ramos. I'm sure we all heard of it, and it was very unfortunate. Um, first and foremost, you know, my condolences to the family who were affected. Um, but we had a lot of positive momentum in the community and to have uh, that, something like that go on in the news. Um, we take that very seriously, and there was some violations at that site. So immediately my team took action the next morning. We met with the prosecutor, chief of police, fire chief, uh, building director took immediate actions to close that facility down and make it abundantly clear to the owner of property and the occupant that they will not be operating in the city of Romulus. That wasn't reflective of our community, our people. Uh, and, you know, nobody from the city of Romulus was involved in the incident. It's just an unfortunate, you know, the address was here. And, but like I said, I just want to make sure everybody knows that we took immediate action and put the full force of City Hall behind this one to make sure it was right and that we we're going to be protected and, and represented in the right manner. So just wanted to share that with everybody out there and we continue to monitor this site um, on a daily basis. I commend Captain Salwa for having his team out there every day and make sure we're keeping an eye on it and making sure we're not going to have behavior like that again in our community as, as far as we're, we're able to regulate it. So and I also want to commend the Romulus police officers who were on scene um, during the incident uh, because we were already made aware of some violations there. They were already on scene. And because of their, their actions that were taken right there, they were able to apprehend that shooter as soon as it happened. So pending investigation right now, they're still working on some things, but uh, the quick reaction time by our, by our police department um, kept it from getting to be a worse situation. So unfortunate situation, but uh, the city took action as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor.
Thank you, Mayor. Number six is the clerk's report. There's two action items under the clerk's report. Action item 6A is the second reading and final adoption of Budget Amendment 23-24-13. It is requested that Council approve the second reading and final adoption to Budget Amendment 23-24-13 in the amount of $7,500 to recognize Visit Detroit donation for the On the Clock Tour event on April 6, 2024 at the Romulus Athletic Center. This budget amendment was introduced at, at the March 11th regular council meeting. Need a motion. I make that motion to support the second reading and final adoption of budget amendment 23-24-13. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Williams, supported by Ms. Roscoe for second reading and final adoption of budget amendment 23-24-13. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. Roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Williams? Yes. Uh, Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, City Council. Agenda item 6B is a request to approve first reading and introduction to amendments to uh, City Code of Ordinance. On Monday, March 11, 2024, the City Council held a special meeting study session to discuss amendments to the pension ordinance. It is requested that Council concur with the recommendations of legal counsel to the Pension Committee and approve the first reading and introduction to amendments to Appendix B, Chapter 38, Pension Plan of the City of Romulus Code of Ordinance. Read a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion for first reading and introduction to amendments to Apex B, Chapter 38, Pension Plan of the City of Ramos Code of Ordinances. Support. <coughs> it's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Mr. Wadsworth. First reading and, and introduction of amendments to the Appendix B, Chapter 38, Pension Plan of the City of Ramos Code of Ordinance. Any discussion? Yes, through the chair. Yes, Ms. Talley. Um, and I talked to Gary about this earlier. Um, thank you. And um, just to just throw it out here, because I know we were just doing some updates, but when I get stuff, I, I read everything. Um, whether it's highlighted, I just need to know what's going on. And so this was very kind of new to me in regards to um, how this process works. So this was very good information to have and to read through. And one of the things I was talking to Gary about was the reports and all this. And one of the things it said, the trustee should render an annual report to the committee and to the city council. This is my second term on city council and I have not seen a report. So I'm not sure. And when I brought it up to Gary, he said the same. This goes back to reporting out, reporting out so we know what's going on. If this is something that the council needs to see or be made privy of, we need to see and maybe privy of. That goes back to a council and these different committees and board. We need to be privy to this information. So Gary said he brought the same uh, point up in meetings, or I don't know which meeting. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, Gary. Um, but I've been, this is my second term. I've never seen anything about an annual report to the council. So um, just in transparency, so that we're abreast of everything that's going on, um, Gary said he would work on that because again, he brought that up as a concern as well. So I just want to put that on the record that we see something and that we're just kept abreast of things that's going on in our city. That's what we're up here for. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you. Yes, uh, I would like to know um, who's on the pension board? So who would be responsible to report back to the council? Is any council me. member on the pension board? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. you are? Mm -hmm. I was okay, I, I didn't know. So, since uh, yeah. Councilwoman Tally had brought that up, I was just concerned. Uh, are you the only one? <laughs> From the council, yes. Yeah. Stacy's on it also, and who else, Stacy? Um, Obviously, Gary, Kevin, um, we have a couple DPW people on there, um, Ron Witten. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? If not, roll call vote. <laughs> Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. 
Motion approved. Thank you, City Council. That concludes the clerk's report. Thank you, Deputy Clerk. Number seven is the treasurer's report. Um, at this time, I do not have anything to report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Number eight is public comment. This is the portion of the, of the agenda for those in the audience who would like to address City Council. The rules to address City Council can be found on the back of the meeting agenda. If you would like to address City Council, please raise your hand and after being acknowledged by the chairperson, approach the podium and state your name. Please note members of the public who submitted a public comment card will be called upon first. You will have three minutes to speak. Any additional time will be upon the consent of the chairperson. So when you do hear the timer go off, please uh, uh, request to the chair for additional time. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do not have any public comment request cards that has been submitted. Any comments from the audience? Uh, Ms. Wolf. Uh, good evening, Gina Wilson Stewart. Good evening, uh, Romulus residents and people in the audience, if you're watching from home. I just would like to say that March is always such an exciting month for me. March is <coughs> reading month, and I'm sure everybody reads the Telegram newspaper along with reading other things, but it's also Women's History Month, right? So when I look at uh, women, I always think of the great women that I see, uh, like Ida B. Wells and Zora Neale Hurston, and those are writers, authors, journalists, and they always excite me and keep me encouraged to do what I do. Um, so just so you know, the Telegram newspaper, I'm the third publisher, first woman for the Telegram newspaper, and this year we'll celebrate our 80th anniversary. We started in 1944, so if you can imagine what was going on in times back then, and we've been in continuous publication since that time, never missing a week. Uh, we were in Washington, D.C., celebrating the black press, 197 years of the black press, starting with Freedom's Journal. And we were in the press room where all of the people do great things in Washington, D.C. And in there was historic publishers, a lot of women, a lot of men back in the day. But it just gave you uh, a good feeling to realize that people were reading back then. And we did read the study that it's been almost a 30% increase in people actually reading print newspapers. Well, you know, Telegram, we're on print and online, like most of the uh, 250 black-owned publishers that we have in the National Newspaper Publishers Organization. So I just like to encourage people to continue to read, continue to support your community newspapers, and even though March is ending and reading month is over, still continue to read at your libraries. You know, we had students go out and read to the senior citizens at the libraries and the communities that we serve. So I like to encourage you guys to continue to read, visit your libraries, and of course, read the Telegram newspaper. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Thank you. Right. Thank you. It, it, Mr. Miller. Good evening, Charles Miller, St. Aloysius Street. I would like to thank Ms. Christy Allen, she's left now, and her associates, uh, representatives of Just Air. Mm -hmm. Not only the information tonight, but for the contact to me, uh, through Mayor Pro Tem Barton. The placement of these units will allow residents to monitor the air quality in and around Romulus. Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport is the largest airport in Michigan. It covers 4,850 4, miles, excuse me. Now, like I said before, Romulus will have very little impact on how the airport operates. But what the monitoring of air quality will allow is those who might be considering to move next to the large airport to consider the impact on children's health and even theirs and will allow 
parents to access this information on a timely fashion and to be able to decide whether the children, if they're asthmatic, should play outside today or should stay inside. 17% uh, of Michigan residents are asthmatic. And I think this is a wonderful project. And as we know, airports are among the largest polluters. It's a necessary evil, but sooner or later I believe what's going to happen is technology is going to catch up to where the impact on these airports will be less than they are now. Finally, I believe in giving credit where credit's due. I want to thank Mayor McCrate, Mayor Pro Tem John Barton, and of course, President Virginia Williams for information and moving quickly with a keen interest in protecting the health and welfare of the citizens around us. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was quick. And by the way, thank you for passing the information uh, in a timely fashion. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Miller. Any other comments from the audience? If there's no other comments from the audience, Deputy Clerk will close that out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Number nine is unfinished business. Number 10 is new business. Ms. Abdo. Yes, I would like to personally thank Mike Laskaska and Colleen Dumas for a great job at the Easter egg hunt. I know you weren't there because you were busy, but the place was packed. The only criticism I had, it was too cold. <laughs> I mean, it was great at the historical park. People loved it, and they worked really hard getting it to work out well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Taylor. Um, Ms. Stewart, you said this is the 80th for the telegram? Correct. Sure. Can we do a resolution? Well, it's in August. Hmm? Yeah, but do we have to wait till then to do a resolution? Can we do that? Sure, you can. Hmm? Okay, let's yeah, do it. You can do it. I'll make the motion. I'll support, support it. All right. It's, it's been motioned by Ms. Talley. Who supported that? Mr. Wadsworth. Mr. Wadsworth. The veteran. It's motioned by Ms. Talley, supported by Mr. Wadsworth for resolution for the telegram paper. 80 years. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that one of that? Awesome. New business? Very good here. I'm Is there any more new business from co uh, council? Number 11 is warrant for approval is warrant 24-06. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. We pay warrant 24-06 in the following amounts. General fund, $143,499.35. Major street fund, $5,253.19. Local street fund, $18,449.82. Public safety fund, $78,633.73. Cable TV, $404.54. Merriman Road Special Assessment, $14,482.14. Oakwood Sad, $82.61. Garbage and Rubbish Collection Fund, $100,620.49. Michigan Indigent Defense Fund, $5,530. 911 Service Fund, $551,082.18. NARC Forfeiture State, $1,933. Library Fund, $7,936.53. DDA, $935.66. TIFA District 2, $63,097.13. Vining Road Extension, E-Course Construction. $22,221.51. Water and Sewer Fund, $246,424.12. Motor Vehicle, $153,129.97.
Technology Services, $3,438.18. Retiree Insurance Benefits, $2,677.02. Revolving Fund, $28,183. <coughs> Current Tax, $11,399.54. Delinquent Personal Property Fund, $46,787.03. Payroll Fund, $142,450.01. Totaling all funds, $1,148,650.75. Oh, second that motion, and I have discussion. It's been motioned by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Talley. You pay warrant number 24, there's 06 for $1,148,650.75. Discussion, Ms. Talley. Um, to the mayor and his team, I um, noticed in the warrant that we have some recipients that have gotten grants for the small business. Thank you. That is so encouraging to see. Are these the first three we have done with the grant money we got for that area? Yes, yes, and that all stems from the uh, the funding we received from uh, Rashida Tlaib yeah. for our downtown area. So it all stems from that. We have an internal grant program for small businesses. The first three yeah. awards are going out. and. Hopefully the word will spread and we'll have more businesses call and, and, uh, and work with them. And there's some businesses that didn't receive them. Okay. Um, and the team's already working with them to sharpen their pencils and make sure that they qualify for the next round. So this continue awesome. to work on that and try to harvest it uh, in our downtown. So thank uh, you. Who is Suzy Q? Pardon me? Who is Suzy Q? That was one of the recipients. I don't, I don't yes. recall. Oh, that's, that. uh, that's our, our own Captain Nemo sub. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, duh. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. So. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yeah, yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, City Council. Number 12 is communications. To the chair. Ms. Talley? Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, um, the steering committee at the school for the school district is moving along forward. Um, I had to miss the last meeting because of work obligations, but just pleased with the progress the steering committee is going going on with the school for the school district. So uh, keep that in our prayers for that to keep moving and keep our district moving forward. Um, our eagles soaring again. Um, our chamber had a great event. I think it was last Tuesday. I think they meet every third Tuesday of the month. So keep our chamber of commerce involved. Um, um, in, um, uh, keep that in mind every Tuesday meet once a month um, Chamber of Commerce and I think they've been working meeting at the rack so we want to keep that in mind and support our Chamber of Commerce and that's Shona Sylvie Baum who's our executive director there and um, it's funny because no one mentioned the big news we had last week we had a ground groundbreaking oh come on we got sheets coming in our community sheets we had a groundbreaking last week, I think it was, and it's phenomenal. And if you drive in that Vining Wick area, I'm like, they are moving so fast. The building structure is already up. So take a drive by there. They had their, we had a groundbreaking last week, and they donated $10,000 to our library. $10,000 donation to our library. That's huge. So thank you, Mayor and your team, for the work that they're getting sheets here. They are moving aggressively, and they're moving swiftly. So we want to thank them. They think they said, was it Labor Day? They're looking to maybe have it going. Labor Day. So y'all, we moving here in Romulus. We doing it. So great job. Um, and then just for me, just some personal things. This is a very special week for me. We had Palm Sunday last yesterday. For me, this is it's, it's Holy Week. This Holy Week for believers and Christians, this is Holy Week, and this is a special time for believers. And we call it the Road to Resurrection at our church. And the kickoff for, to our Road to Resurrection is our Good Friday walk this Friday. You got the information from Vanessa. We'll be at the Historical Park walking with the uh, Ministerial Alliance. So please feel free to join us on that. Um, that's just part of the Road to Resurrection. And as we know, that Sunday. Most people say Easter. I call it Resurrection Sunday. That's when my Lord rose from the dead. He died on Friday and he rose on Sunday. So just want to keep this Holy Week this week. I just want to keep that in people's mind. It's just a, it was a bad time um, in history, but it was a great time in history for believers. So just keep that up for this week. It's a very special week. Um, 
honor of our, honoring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm going to end on that note because that's enough. Amen. Thank you. I would just like to, uh, since Ms. Uh, Jenny Stewart had brought up about the, the many, actually decades that the paper has been in progress and serving uh, all of Wayne County that I know of, uh, maybe you should consider on when it comes up again to apply to be a newspaper again. And on another note, We'll be at the high school, Forgotten Harvest, uh, from 10 to 12. Um, all is welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mayor. <clears throat> Just on the on the the, count, the the comments on sheets. Yeah, it's, it's a great win over there. It's mm -hmm. a it's a family owned and operated company that's been mm -hmm. in different states for and they haven't expanded for 20 years. So this is their first expansion, not only in Michigan. It's their first expansion in 20 years. And they're, they're planning on almost 50 stores in Michigan in the future. And what we liked about it the most was we had some say so when we came in there. When we had Royal Farms um, backed out of the deal, North Point brought us to the table and we interviewed. And we liked Sheets because it was family owned and operated. They don't franchise out, so they have more control over their proprietary area. Um, so, and for them to show up, the groundbreaking. And they not only had a. Um, a ten thousand dollar check for the library. They also had a ten thousand dollar check for Special Olympics mm -hmm. and a ten thousand dollar check for Forgotten Harvest. So mm -hmm. it shows that they're community and civic minded, and uh, that's what we're trying to do: bring in developers who want a relationship with the community. It's not just build it and, and done. Um, and is it that great big shiny thing everybody wanted? No, but it's a great start, and mm -hmm. it shows you that Ramos in a lot of conversations. So we'll continue to yeah. build off it. It's the first olive out of the bottle for us. So right. we'll keep pushing. We'll ride that momentum. So here we go. Love it. Any other? No other communications? Is there any more communications from council? I uh, just uh, want to say uh, to the mayor, thank you for revealing the $10,000 checks. I had no earthly idea. So thank you very much for revealing that and how he the other two to indicate uh, I, I can't take credit for any of that. It was all, it was all sheets. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know who up here knew. I didn't know. Yep. I, mean, yeah, did or, it. I like to be privy to checks that are being presented to our city. John, you know, yeah. I would like being a bitch too this show. <laughs> Ten dollars check you it out. That's, that's great. It's great. Great. Good job. What I liked about them, I would like to say they're family owned, so we don't have to worry about the big corporations where they look at the people like they're don't mean anything. They're family orientated and uh, the goodie bags that they gave out, uh, along with the donation checks, was just wonderful. And one thing I did uh inform them that you're giving Forgotten Harvest uh, the money, make sure Forgotten Harvest spend it in Ramos. That's a good idea. My favorite part of the, get the goodie bag was the umbrella. It was, it rained enough that day, <laughs> so that umbrella came in handy, so. That cookie. <laughs> that chocolate chip cookie. Okay. Uh, I have nothing until uh, the football season starts. <laughs> <laughs> July 10th. All right. All right, if there's no more uh, communications from council, number 13 is adjourned and the time is 829. So moved. Support. It's been motioned by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Roscoe for adjournment. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Talley? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>